everything we everything we cover today is um, general information only, so it uh, does not take into account of your um, personal objectives, financial situation or needs. Uh, you're recommended to seek advice from independent uh, financial planners. Um, yes, but uh, all the information we'll cover, all the analysis here, um, I think they are they are the pretty good stuff. Uh, I've been I've been doing this for hundreds of uh, webinars. I've covered quite a bit of markets, and uh, the the experience I'm hoping to bring to everyone to to give you insights on what to trade. So uh, let's get started. Um, oh, almost forgot to introduce myself. Uh, I'm the head of research and analysis here at Atos Capital Group. My name is Glenn. Um, I've worked uh, quite a bit in the industry, so I have worked as a trader on the trading floor uh, in the uh, FTSE listed um, British trading firm. I'm a registered stockbroker, um, regulated by the Australian Securities and Investment Commission and a member at the Stockbrokers Association. I've uh, attended Harvard Business School and the University of Cambridge. And, and I, I, you will find, if you read a lot of financial news, you'll find me um, giving comments to Reuters, US News, NASDAQ, uh, Wall Street Insiders, and so on. So yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. And it's, it's really, really great to see a lot of people attending tonight. Uh, I look forward to seeing you more next time. Um, so let's jump straight into uh, the NFP. So what, what's the NFP? For starter, if you are new to NFP, um, it is a job number. Okay, It is published every month by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It covers um, basically everything uh, throughout the United States except the farming population. So jobs created everywhere or jobs disappeared everywhere. If it's a positive number, that means we're, we're seeing jobs increasing. If we're seeing a, a, a negative number, that means jobs are being taken out of the economy. So generally speaking, a stronger economy uh, needs a stronger NFP. Uh, a weaker econ economy will see a weaker NFP. So that's NFP. Um, so Tonight, we'll be uh, looking at the October NFP figure. So uh, if I zoom in a little bit, we'll see them here, down here, right here. So um, so you'll see US NFP to be released at 11.30 here in Australian time. So with a four hour difference, should be 7.30 or so in Vietnam, I, I believe. But please double check with your uh, financial calendar. So we'll see that you know um the but, but, but here non-farm payroll for October three star that means a high impact very important stuff going on right here. So the estimate okay we're seeing an estimate so what economists what financial uh, analysts are predicting to happen is one hundred eighty thousand uh, new employees added uh, compared to the data from September which is the month before that three hundred thirty six thousand so. Uh, quite apparently a big step down from September, almost half the value uh, from September. So we're, we're, if if the real data um, happens to uh, meet our expectation at 180 or so, that's half of September's reading. And we want that to be low now, okay? Uh, if you are trading, if you are a long trader on uh, US stocks, a long trader on gold, silver, oil, you will want this number to be as low as possible. Why is that? Because normally we we'll want a higher uh, NFP number to show strength in the economy. So when the US economy is doing well, people start buying things, spending, people invest. Um, that that's the, um, the the theory behind it. But right now we are having uh, we have been having this strong inflation since the the, the pandemic. So. Uh, really low interest rates, really high inflation. And that's why the Federal Reserve, which is the US central bank, that has been hiking rates very uh, aggressively in the past year or so. So if we, they, they see this um, going up again, they might feel the need to hike the rates one more time. And hiking rates is bad for equities. So bad for stock indices, bad for gold, bad for oil. So right now we want Want this number to be low. We want to be like 180 or so, 190, 170, 60. That'd be good. If it comes out to be like 350, 360, 400, they'll be bad for everything else I've just said. So that's that. And if you, um, but let's look at here NFP. Okay. Now this is 
uh, October data. Some people say, hey, Glenn's so hard to predict and non farm payroll data, it's, it's never the same. Uh, it never goes to the, the estimates. Well, that's true because it is a big job. It's a big data. So uh, there are errors and it's, it's hard to get it uh, right every time. But if you look at this um, seasonal changes, you probably see a pattern in it. Okay. So if we go to uh, Trading View, if you use Trading View, it's quite simple. Trading View, type in here USNFP. You'll see what I'm seeing right now. That is the NFP. I'm using uh, column charts because line chart is. It's terrible, you can't see anything. So go here and go to column chart. You'll see the um, monthly uh, monthly data very clearly. So going back to October in 2022, it was around 324,000. Going back to uh, data in October 2021, it's massive, 780. And if you do so, and you know, we, we go all the way back, you'll see uh, the figures, I've got them here. Uh, 2020 is 700. Uh, 2019, so before the pandemic, pre-pandemic uh, pre pandemic levels, 140, 155, 148, 108, uh, 320, 242, 220, and 159. So the data in October, generally speaking, it's not very high. It's not very crazy before the pandemic. So October is 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 um cyclically uh, um you know um um an average point is about 150 or so. So I'm guessing tonight we are probably not going to see a massive jump in NFP. Uh, I'm personally tilting against probably uh, low 200s. Okay, 220. Um, hopefully it'll be lower than that. That'll be good for the indices, like I said before. So that's that's that. And some people may ask, you know, hey, Glenn, what's the uh, correlation between non-farm payroll? And how, I mean, how does that affect all the other uh, asset classes or the other markets? Well, that's a clear indication of that. We can go here and FP as well, uh, press the plus sign. I want to put in DXY. I want to see the correlation between Let's switch back to line chart first. I want to see the correlation between non-farm payroll and US dollar because US dollar affects everything else. Okay, so wait, let's go to DXY. I'll go new price scale and you will see the price um, correlations between these two. Let's zoom them, zoom them in a bit, zoom them in a bit. Now you'll see this, okay. So looking from the left to the right, you'll see uh, the blue one is our non-farm payroll okay uh the, the orange one is our um us dollar index so basically the strength of the us dollar the stronger the us dollar um that that, that will bring everything else down because we don't want a strong dollar we want a, a weaker dollar uh, we want everything else to go up that most most investors think that way okay but if you are a dollar trader you want nfp to go higher because you want your dollar to go higher uh, that's that's the thing. So if you see here, um, at this, uh, March 2021, we see that a jump, a spike in non-farm payroll data. Okay, that's a, that's a massive jump in non-farm payroll. Now we see that subsequent jump in the dollar as well. Then NFP plunged. Now we see that US dollar coming down as well. Then US NFP going up again. The dollar going up. You can see the correlation here. Uh, most of the time, they move side by side. The dollar is up, and FP is up. Or should I say the other way around? The higher the, the job number, the better it is for the dollar because markets are expecting, um, are looking, uh, waiting for the Federal Reserve to hike rates if there are too many people working. To put into perspective, you know, all this data talking can be a little bit uh, boring. But if you, if you think you are um, working or you are hiring, um, you are working at, let's say, you're working in a, in a cafe or you, you have a business or you work in an office. Um, the more people there are in your office, the more the company is going to pay money out to everyone. And the more money you have, the more you're going to spend. Okay, When you spend more, there's inflation. Everything becomes expensive. People have too much money, uh, too little pro products in the, in the, in the market. That, that's what's going to uh, move the dollar uh, a lot. So rate expectation is this. So we've said you know, we've so far up to this point we've covered everything in theory. So let's have a look uh, in practice. Okay, let's look at U.S. dollar index. I've done lots of uh, lines here, as you can see. Uh, I'd like to go back to um, the four-hour chart. 
On the four hour chart, you'll see um, the dollar index has touched the bottom here uh, in mid July. That is um, 99.556. That is the trough, that is the bottom. And then it started a trend going upward. So we can see that going here all the way up to here. That is the uh, 3rd of October, reaching the peak of 107 to 80. So that is the peak. And the advantage of having this bottom and this peak uh, for us is to draw a Fibonacci retracement. So quite simply, go to Fibonacci retracement. If you don't have it here, right click and go to customize. You can add the Fibonacci from the left to the right. And they will have it here. So drawing that Fibonacci retracement level from bottom to top gives you several key levels. The retracement going here, we have 99.556, uh, 101. 40, 101, 93, uh, 102, uh, 102, uh, 540, um, and we have 103, 480, and uh, 104, 40, and all the way up. So zooming in a little bit onto the hourly chart, you'll see that since um, early October, the US dollar that index with DXY has been fluctuating in between this level, the top level, and the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement level. You'll see plenty of candle movements here, up and down, up and down, up and down in here. So, you know, the dollar, is that strong? Is it strong? It is still, it's still very strong. It's, it doesn't move down. It's uh, still above the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement level. But will this level continue? That is the key. That is the key for tonight. If we ha we're having a very low, um, very, very low um, NFP number, then we're probably going to see this coming down and as you can see here there's a there's a gap down okay the gap down from 106 uh 10663 um to 106 uh 47 so that's a gap down that's that's market confidence missing right there it's being markets are being quite quite uh, pessimistic about this uh thinking the dollar might drop lower so the markets are expecting for the nfp to go lower uh, according to this price action here um so that's the dollar index for now so the U.S. dollar index. People say, "Hey, we, we're trading the, the, the dollar index. So I, I'm going to see where it goes." Um, but what is the dollar index? A lot of people don't don't really understand that. So it is the U.S. dollar uh, against a basket of other currencies. So in the basket, there's euro, there's pound, there's uh, Japanese yen, and so on. The heaviest is euro. Okay, so. Euro is very important. If euro goes down and you know pound goes down, everything else goes up, it doesn't matter. The dollar index is gonna go up. Okay, so euro is very important. Then there's the the the, the pound in here. So that's that. We we'll cover that as well. Uh, we'll move on to euro and pound later on. But now moving on to um our favorite gold. Okay, gold is here. Gold has quite a few uh critical levels since the beginning of uh, October, that is when the geopolitical tension worsened uh, dramatically in the Middle Eastern region. We saw that uh, Israel uh, Hamas war broke out right here. And you can see if I zoom in, you'll be able to see this. You'll be able to see this gap. Okay, the spike here. It went higher from here. So from 1835, so $1,835 per ounce, all the way up to um 1845. So that's about $15 jump. And then you stayed in this Davos box pattern for for a few days for two trading set, two to three sessions uh, before breaking up again. So the trend was very, very powerful. And as we know it, the gold is a safe haven asset when there is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm seeing, seeing lots of chat going on. Uh, wonderful. Okay. So uh, these are the, um, so many languages. I'm so sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, I can't read. Oh, okay, so people are helping uh, with our uh, clients on setting the subtitles. Cool. So if you guys have questions, feel free to to spam them here. We've got our uh, client managers uh, from our VN team, our Thai team, and our Malaysian team. So please um, type in questions here. Uh, they'll be able to uh, give them to me as feedback, and we can talk about them here. Uh, so do keep them going, please. Uh, so yes, so we see that gold is a is, um, safe haven asset when there is uncertainty, let's say there's war, when there is high inflation, uh, when there's financial crisis, 
uh, gold tends to be where money flows to. So um, that is uh, important. So gold is very, very important in this sense. Um, so looking at here, we see um, the price actions jumping out of the Davos box and moving higher to 1873, 1873 um, then moving higher to 1896 and all the way up to uh, 19, the 1900 level. So that is also very, very important here. And then once again, it went into the Davos box pattern again. So when every time you see a Davos box pattern, it is when uh, the bears and the bulls don't really know where it's going to go. Okay, there's, there's discrepancy. People think it's probably the right price level and some people think, no, that's not. That's too high or that's too low. They come back, they fight here. So here and here, that is when markets are waiting for something to happen. And evidently, you see the US president, uh, Joe Biden, visits Israel. And people and what traders were uh, expecting peace talks. Okay, if peace talks happens, the war is no longer then, you know, gold loses its its uh, ability as a safe haven. So then the price was uh, expected to come down there. Now we can see that price did not come down dramat dramatically. It dropped a little bit, but then the peace talk was not in place. If things got worse from there, so price kept going up, as we can see here. Uh, support and visits Israel here, Powell speech. Uh, so lots of uh, central bank actions here as well, and which took our uh, gold above uh, 1993, then all the way up over 2000 again. Now, another price level here to watch out for is um, here, right here. So going from 1993 to 2000, and that's, you know, it's $7 per ounce, not massive, but $2,000 per ounce is a huge psychological level. So to beat that level, you will need a lot of momentum. You need a lot of um, dec dec decisiveness from the, the bull's side. So this is what's causing it to go up. And that is um, Israel announces phase two, which is ground invasion to the Gaza Strip. So that's uh, things getting worse. And we're seeing that going up to 2009. Okay, $2,009 per ounce. Uh, massive, massive. Um, then fell back to 1993. And that's it. So... The question for us is, you know, is gold going to keep rising? Is it going to keep rising? We can identify three trends here. We can see, um, let me go to the cursor here. So here is the first trend, okay? Connecting all the lower points all the way up to here, you'll see the first trend, first trend going up. Then things went sideways for a bit before the second trend kicked in, went up down and third trend. Now we are currently in stage three, so the third trend. Now we do not have enough lower points to make a, a perfect, uh, perfectly accurate upward trend line, but we can certainly adjust our trend line to represent the lower points um, here, here, and here. Now uh, it's moving towards uh, 1989, so possibly going to challenge 1993 tonight but heavily dependent on the NFP data. If that comes out to be very strong data, you know, high number, 400,000 jobs added, then this will definitely create a strong headwind for gold. So gold will smash if there's a, it's a, it's a very strong um, NFP. On the other hand, if NFP is weak, you know, 150, 160, that will give our gold a very good chance to, uh, to challenge 2000 again. So it's very, very heavily uh, data dependent uh, tonight. So that's our gold. Um, and if you are looking for um, uh, critical support and the resistance levels, I suggest you putting these numbers down uh, on your charts or you got a piece of paper, write that down and you can put them on your charts uh, later on. So the first level we're, he we're seeing here, the first resistance level is 1993. Then the support level here is 1983. And moving down, we have 1969. We have 1953. Then we have uh, 1940, 1929, 1912. But to be honest, if it does really go down to 1953 or 1940, 
the trend will have changed. If it goes up to, uh, it goes down to 1912, and you're still going to uh, you know, take the long trade to the open long position, you have to think again. I'm thinking that if it goes down that way, it, the trend will have changed quite dramatically. All the elements, all the pricing um, will be different. So um, for, for tonight, um, let's say if, if an FP is announced uh, within the next hour, let's say, for example, if it's next hour, you will have to look at 1983 and 1993 levels. Um, if the data is good, once again, if we see a weak NFP data where, where we can probably set our uh, stop profit, take profit orders a bit higher. Uh, but if we're seeing a really strong number, you have to think about uh, being uh, cautious if you are taking the long side. Uh, you know, conversely, if you are a short trader, you, you think gold is going to crash tonight, you will be expecting for a high NFP number. Okay, the stronger job data will always be a challenge for gold. Now, another one we want to talk about, we can always come back to this. Okay, guys, if you have questions, drop them in. Uh, our team members will be happy to assist. Uh, the second um, market we're going to look at, very similar to gold, is silver. Because silver and the gold, all, uh, most of the time, they move in the same direction. So they go up together, they go down together. Um, the slight differences, but most of the time, they're, they're very similar. If we look at silver, you'll see um, silver has a few critical levels here, and including the current level, it's it's a, it's a new support level, twenty two sixty two. Okay, twenty two dollars sixty two cents. That's a new support level, which is where it is right now. But the next resistance we're seeing here is twenty two seventy six. That's the next one. If you want to go a bit higher, twenty three twenty seven. I want to go to the next support level, twenty two. Uh, 11 okay so so very um so you can see that the, the silver movement has been quite um how, how do we put, put how do we put this it's, it's behaving very uh friendly okay despite these two spikes here and here it has been uh in 2250 uh between 2250 and 23 uh, 27 so that um, sideway movement here, that volatility inside the box, if we're seeing a good NFP number once again tonight, uh, it might lead us to test the uh, 23, uh, 27 level. If that fails to guard the 22, uh, 50, we might have to uh, see the 22, uh, 11 level here. So silver quite similarly uh, moves in the same way with gold, uh, but but uh, is also very vulnerable to an data or we can only benefit from the fp uh, that's our silver now moving to um oil let's look at the oil us oil okay um us oil i've been looking at oil for quite a bit because i i think if you guys have been trading oil um since um the russia ukraine war last year you will know that the, the oil has um been a huge beneficiary of the supply side uh change in in the, these two major oil uh, producing countries um so that you know where the the, the um, geopolitical conflict is taking place right now is in the middle eastern region and most of the countries in that region including saudi arabia uh iran there's uh well iran's been sanctioned but iran included there's uh, iraq there is um uae there's syria there's so many oil producing countries in the region if we're seeing uh, a major disruption in supply there uh, that could really really uh, drive up the prices um so i've been looking at oil quite closely but if you come back to the chart you will see this is where the arrow is pointing. Here is where the war broke out. We're seeing that uh, price is jumping up, uh, very similar to gold. So oil price is going up here, hitting a little bit of a roof, uh, came down and up again. So all of these events where I point the arrows on, um, they are very highly correlated to the um, fundamental developments you see. U.S. presidents visiting Israel, uh, potential peace talks, but there's no peace talk. Uh, visits Israel and supports Israel, there's no peace talk. Um, these are the the, the um, um, key uh, forces driving uh, the, the oil supply and demand, and this is what we call a fear trade. When there's a fear trade in place, 
um, people don't, you know, they, they don't they don't price in the products accordingly. There's there's always the temptation. There was the fear element that uh, that tends to pri uh, push prices higher. However, if we look at the current price today, we'll see that um, for U.S. oil, um, the price has dropped below the price level on which the war broke out. You know, it's before the it's the pre-war price level now. Um, so you know, all of these fear pricing have been taken out. There's nothing else left in it. But is is the, the region still under threat that the, the uh, supply could be disrupted? Yes, certainly is. Uh, it's only been three weeks since since the conflict um, broke out. So that is definitely a potential, upside potential. Uh, so for so oil traders, if you're looking at, say, hourly charts, uh, you're, if you're considering uh, this bearish tunnel moving from uh, eight nineteen dollars all the way down here. If you extend that, okay. For if we extend this, you will see the price has actually just uh, come out of the tunnel. So that's uh, the positive sign for bull traders. No, um, it's, it's a positive development um, here. However, uh, also keep an eye on the NFP because NFP drives the value of US dollar, and the stronger dollar will push. The value of U.S. oil is down because you have your your currency worth more money now, right? You will need less of the currency to buy the same amount of um, products or goods. So you, you higher or expensive USD is bad for the oil. On the other hand, if let's say uh, NFP comes out to be huge, okay, a huge number, and uh, the the Federal Reserve <clears throat> is going sorry it comes down to be a very minor number 150 140 uh, then it, it could uh, promote the the federal reserve to uh you know to switch to a more dovish side they might uh stop hiking stop hiking no more hikes you know, that, that's it 5.5 that's not, no more hikes if that's the case the dollar value will be capped so that will benefit the oil prices because the, the currency in your hand is not appreciating uh the products um, everything else is unchanged, then you have to spend more of the same currency to buy the same amount of products. So that's that's the first step here. Um, yes, yeah, so once again, it totally depends on what you think on the non-farm payroll. If you think it's going to be excellent, uh, massive, massive, then you probably go short on US, US oil. But if you, if you think you're quite optimistic, uh, the non-farm payroll data will be lower than expected or quite similar to the, the estimate, which is about 180 a uh, thousand uh, increase uh, in increase then that we can probably test the upside but nevertheless we will have the same key price levels they've been uh, valid for a long time so uh, if you have a piece of paper and a pen uh, do suggest you writing them down 82.43 is the current support okay 82.43 well, I, I'm thinking the translation software is not uh, working on this. I'll, I'll say I'll say that again. Eighty-two dollars and forty-three cents per barrel is a support level. The next one up, the next resistance level, is eighty-five dollars and sixty cents per barrel. Yep, I think the translation is better now. And another level up. So the next resist resistance level is $87.92 here. Okay. And the last one here is $90.57 per barrel. Okay. So these key levels are very important to watch out for. Um, that's for US oil. And if you're trading UK oil, just give me a second. My apology. Okay. So, the, um, so look at the UK oil. You will have a very similar movement here very similar um so we have uh, the jump up here after the war broke out and going up going down but if we zoom in to the four hour chart you will see the downward channel or the ascending channel has been broken from here it was broken already on uk oil is showing more strength Stronger is better uh, in terms of uh, you know upside the momentum is stronger than um, 
than the uh, US Joyo, its counterpart. So once again, uh, key levels to uh, to put down your paper, $87.38 per barrel. That's the key support level. It bounces down here. You, you may be able to try uh, if you want to. I mean, this is your decision, but if it goes down there, as you can see, it has many times, uh, there's a four hour chart. It has touched the one, two, three, almost three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 times uh, here on four hourly charts. Okay, so that's that covers a very long time. Uh, so the eighty-seven dollars and thirty-six cents per barrel level is critical. It's important, uh, and if you are very optimistic, you think it's going to test the uh, the upside, uh, you can always try ninety-one dollars and twenty-seven cents. That's the next resistance level. You may consider that as a um, a point near which um, to to set your take uh, profit orders. Oh, I'm reading some questions. Okay, let me have a look. Okay, thank you, Jenny. We've got five questions. Okay, sure. Let's do these questions first. And I, I hope our uh, clients from Thailand and uh, Malaysia will join us as well. Uh, so okay, thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, first question is, with the war situation in, in Israel, will gold continue to increase? And at this time, should we continue to buy gold? Very good question. So. Uh, very good question, whoever um, did this question. So like I uh, I said, um, the I, I personally think the trend has changed. It is, well, we're not, I'm not saying it's going to, to crash down tonight, but I do feel like if we switch the four hourly channel, uh, chart, you will see um, at the beginning of the war, right after war broke out, we can see this massive uh, and massively strong uh, momentum pushing gold all the way up here to 1997. So that's just the sub 2000 level. It's it's a massive push and so fast. It happened in, in um, let's see, see uh, the 8th to the 20th. That's, you know, uh, just a little bit over a week in terms of trading days. So that's very powerful. But now after that, you know, we, it's, it's been moving sideways. 1969, uh, that's a very important level. And it's been penetrated twice already here. And then 1983. So I think, um, I personally, if you ask me, Glenn, do you want to go, if you have to choose between uh, buying or selling gold, I would probably go for, for on, the, on the buy side. I mean, downside is plenty. Downside is plenty of risk to go all the way down. That's, I mean, if it goes up, then then it's, it's really bad. Okay. Uh, but if you want, if you ask me, Glenn, at what level are you going to buy it? I, I would I'll say I'll be more cautious now. Okay, if you ask me at the beginning of October when I hear uh, the news that the war broke out, I just go in with, with heavy hands. Okay, that time I just go in with heavy hands because it's going to go up quite quite a lot and quite aggressively. But now if you ask me, I'd be very careful on the technical side. Um, so this is why I said so 1969. Sorry, I'll try again because the translation won't work properly. $1,969 per ounce. That is a support level. It drops here, I might consider. Uh, currently, it is on this upsloading trend line. So if if you are uh, drawing this upward sloping trend line on your MT5, you can use this line as a, a moving support and resistance, resistance level. Okay. If it drops down here to 18, uh, 19, uh, sorry, $1,986 per ounce now, Yes, maybe, maybe give a go. Maybe give a go. Okay, this is my personal opinion. It's okay, um, not financial advice, but but you can see that if you had done that, touching on here up onto the nineteen, well, one thousand nine hundred eighty-three level again, down here again, pushing up again. Yeah, so so there are plenty of places to push and and try. And I would be cautious in a way that you know if it uh, it goes up to nineteen ninety-three. 1993 and I'll probably take my profit I'll be I'll be cautious I'll adjust my uh take profit uh closely or I won't sell it to two two thousand and uh you know two thousand and eighteen dollars per ounce I probably I, I won't put my take profit here I'll make it nice and short and quick uh because th there'll be a lot of volatility tonight if it goes up and down quickly I want you to to take whatever that is yours to take it and 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 get out and stay stay there. Okay, stay safe. Stay safe. So that's for gold. Um, 
And second question says, why do gold and the dollar sometimes move in the same direction? A very good question, because generally they move in different directions, right? But um, if, if you can give me an exact date, uh, on which date and, and um, at what time did this happen? There are many, many, um, let's say, many uh, other variables that affect uh, gold and uh, dollar movements. Uh, I remember the last one was when, I think it was when the treasury yield um, dropped and the US dollar came down. Uh, so hang on, no, the, the, the treasury yield uh, went up and the dollar went up, but then something bad, I, I couldn't remember exactly which one, but there was uncertainty in the market. So pri uh, price of gold was also going up. So the the elements, the, the variables that was driving uh, both gold and um and um, a dollar happened at the same time, and in, in, in other words, it pushed uh, the the negative negativity out of uh, gold's way, and the gold went up as well. So uh, it depends on exactly what time you can. If you if we had to, if we are running out of time tonight, you can uh, send the d details that you know which day did this happen to Jenny or to your uh, client managers. We we can come back to this. We'll dig through the data, and I'll get back to you on that one. Um, okay, so that's number two. And question number three, non-farm payroll tonight, if the news is good for USD, will the price of USD CAD increase? Okay, that's that's a good one. Um, USD CAD, so basically USD is the first name currency. If good news is good for USD, then certainly, most likely, most likely USD CAD will go up as well. And in in under, like I said, under the current um economic circumstances we we want uh, you know the, what what's good for usd is, is that the, the number goes up a lot right we're on 340 400 uh we maybe 290 okay if the numbers are a bit amb ambiguous it'd be hard to know but we want the numbers to be high for for usd cad to go higher so that's our usd cad uh last uh, the number four uh, the dollar yen has broken its current peak. Will I continue to buy or should I wait for more information from the Japanese government? Wow, whoever did this one, give yourself a clap. That, that's a super good question here. Um, the US, uh, the dollar yen has been a very interesting pair. It has always been. Uh, has always been. I remember last year we uh, we were waiting for the, the yen to come down. Yeah, it essentially went up to uh, one, uh, 152. Uh, and then there was the Japanese uh, Bank of Japan intervention uh, a few times in a row, which uh, brought the price down. And uh, you know, the the the, um, the way the markets were pricing in dollar yen last year um, is very different uh, to today. Uh, back in uh, late 2022, so same time last year, um, markets were expecting. Uh, the Federal Reserve to stop hiking. I mean, not stop hiking, but the the inflation in in the states to reach a peak. Then the dollar would go down. That's the pivot point we've been talking about last year. So after pivot, um, and 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 the the U the Japanese inflation kept going up. Right, it's been above the Japanese uh, central bank's target for for fifteen or sixteen months in a row already. So the market expectation back then was. Uh, inflation in the U.S. Is coming down, inflation in Japan going up. We have the V-shape, and there was a crossover here. That's the point where the yen should go up and the dollar should come down. And that's the pricing from last year. But the pricing from this year is slightly different, um, in which by which I mean, look at this going up all the way from one twenty something, one twenty eight was it? Yes, one twenty seven, all the way up back to 151.70 again. And that, that is similar price level to last year. And the Federal Reserve has quite clearly indicated, you know, inflation is, is under control. Uh, hikes are open to more hikes, but from the rhetoric, it is not that necessary anymore. So it's very interesting that the dollar has continued to climb against the yen. Um, so yen at, in the short term, you know, 150 level has been broken. Um, it, it is a tricky shot. But, but if you ask me, you know, will I uh, continue to buy or should I wait for more information from the government? My point is I'm slightly, I'm quite, not slightly, I'm quite heavily tilted against shorting the dollar yen. 
having said that, you have to control your positions very carefully because the dollar yen pair has been proven uh, to be going crazy sometimes. So if you are going to short the dollar yen, make sure your positions are, are uh, uh, you know, controlled very very uh nicely you you find new positions don't chuck in at 151 hoping to go all the way down to 127 you you keep your positions nice and small and and you know until that pivot happens until that breaking point happens and i mean what time at what point would that uh, the pivot happen now the current uh market um perception is that by uh, April, so spring next year, spring 2024, uh, we are very likely to see uh, the Bank of Japan um, tilting, okay, so changing. Uh, they've been tweaking the yield curve control, the YCC, uh, a few times now. Uh, they've just done it this week, and they did another one, the first one, uh, that was three months ago. So both have caused massive volatility in, in the dollar-yen pairs. So the inflation for the question for Bank of Japan is: the inflation have you got inflation? Yes, I have. We have got plenty of inflation. Have you got economic growth? Yes, we have. Have you got uh, uh, increases in your real estate prices? Yes, they have. They've got almost everything. There's only one thing missing: that is wage increase. Okay, so if you have, say, if you're living in Japan, everything's going up in prices because inflation is here now. Finally, here, things are going up: sushi, sashimi. I know everything's going up, um, but if your wage is not going up, if you're not if you're making more money, it doesn't matter to you. You're not going to buy them, right? I'm not going to spend more my money uh, to to go to you know the luxury cruise. I'm going to to have some expensive uh, sashimi. It doesn't really matter because you don't have the money. So that's why the price will drop down again because nobody's buying them. So the then the inflation is gone. Okay, then there's no more inflation, nothing to worry about. No need to change your policies. No need to hike. No need to tweak our YCC anymore. No need to get out of negative rates territory. That's that's the idea. So wage increase is very important. If your wage is moving up with inflation, then you can spend. I'm making more money. I don't care if the uh, cake or watermelon is becoming more expensive, which they are. Uh, you know, I can spend. I can buy them. Then you have your um. You know, inflation building up. Yeah, and the five thousand yen for a watermelon. You know, a small baby watermelon. Kawaii desne watermelon. Then you know, oh, I'm making five thousand yen, and that's okay. I'll buy that. You know, that that, that will drive inflation up, and that's what uh, Bank of Japan is worried, and that's what they want to see. If that happens, then yes, inflation will keep building up, and that is when they should get out of the negative uh, interest rate territory. That would be very important. Uh, that would be super good news for the yen. Okay, so when's that gonna happen? Next question is, uh, it will probably happen. The best case scenario, if you're super optimistic, the best case scenario is the end of this year. So December next month, if that's the best case scenario. But if you're being conservative, which most people are, uh, it will be April next year. April. That is when the spring wage, uh, spring salary uh, review comes in. So Japan adjusts their uh, national um, salaries uh, in in April. So that if that in April the board and the, the authorities decide, hey, we gotta you know increase our wages national wide, then yes, wages go up. Then Bank of Japan will be able to find a position to uh, execute to tweak uh, or not to tweak to to you know, say goodbye to YCC or even get rid of the negative rates uh, for once for all. So that's uh, the dollar yen. If you're trading right now, if you want to go short, make sure you have good position sizing. Uh, don't go crazy. Don't go massive. Don't go too, ha too heavy handed. Uh, but if you wanted, really wanted to wait for that moment to be very safe, uh, a very safe player, wait a bit, a bit longer to see, you know, um, but, but once again, coming back to non-farm payroll, if the data is bad for the dollar, then the yen might be good, right? It will be good for the yen. So hopefully, uh, if you are shorting it tonight, um, let's hope for the data to come out to be a weak data uh, for the NFP. So that's question four. And the question five, I am selling pound dollar at 1.2966. Will the old price increase again or will it continue to decrease? Okay, let's... Have like have a look at the uh, pound and dollar. Okay, so you said it's about one point two two nine something. Like one point two nine six six. One point two nine six six. That is a good price. So you went short, 
right? It went short on uh, pound uh, dollar. That is uh, the cable. It's a very good, very good point. Prices. Um, well, apparently the down the, the the bearish tunnel, the bearish tunnel here. There are two here. Okay, uh, one uh, was steeper than the other. But from my perception, I think it has reached the bottom at one point two one. That's one point two one is is quite a good support level there. Uh, and right now, the price actions have continued to move sideways, to move sideways for a bit since uh well, late September. So these are four hour charts. Uh, moving to our charts. If we extend this down here, you'll also see. Uh, the triangle here. Okay, so price is at one point two one nine two one. Uh, that's a support level, and that's also broken up of the downward uh, channel. So, I think the pound has found a bottom here. Uh, I wouldn't, if you ask me, I wouldn't personally shorten it from here because it is a very limited downside uh, movement, whereas this massive. That movement for for the upside, and as we know, the the Federal Reserve has been uh, rather dovish, so quite friendly, quite nice. Uh, no more crazy hikes since there. So um, I'm expecting the pound to found some more uh, opportunities to rebound. Um, so the pound dollar um, probably wouldn't short it at here. That that's my opinion though. All right, um, cool. Um, I'm seeing another question here. Is euro USD and the pound dollar a pair to buy at this time? I see they are struggling at the strong support zone. Okay, that's that's very good. Thank you, Robert. Uh, robot, Robert, Robot. Uh, okay, yes, all right. That, so we've just covered uh, the um, the the pound and dollar part here, but let's look at euro. Euro. Let's zoom out a bit. This euro has been moving sideways a lot more than the pound. And that's what I feel. And like you said, Rob, Rob, uh, it's it's moving um, between 1.05 and 1.07, so sideways a lot. Um, uh, if we do this Davos box pattern, I think we'll find one here. Yeah, see the Davos box pattern is mostly here, mostly in here. So every time I see price actions like this, it, it reminds me of people that are being in in. Uh, indecisive they don't they don't know what what's going to happen next they're waiting for major economic data which is quite uh the case tonight as an nfp will be released very soon um so yeah once again i think it's data dependent tonight but if you ask me another way Glenn, is do you think euro usd will be going any lower than 1.04868 i'll probably say uh I expect it to go higher rather than lower. So like you said, the support zone has been established. Unless something extremely bad happens to the Eurozone, let's say, I don't want to say that, but you know, if something really bad economically or, or geopolitically that happens, then yes, the, the Euro will face downside pressure. But at this moment, I'm seeing a positive uh, momentum building here, and that is a very strong support zone. So Rob, thank you. Uh, I hope this uh, answers your questions. All right, let's see if there's any more. Well, there's plenty. That's very good. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't I, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Quen 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 uh Quen. Uh, yes, sorry, Jenny. Yes, yes. Um, that's correct. Isn't okay, name. okay, thank you. Quen. So uh, uh, Quen says Chen says, uh, what is the impact of NFP data on the global economy and why? That is very good. I mean, this is like what an economist would ask. Uh, very big, big uh, stuff. So like we said in uh, in the first half of our webinar, um, the NFP has a, such a strong implication to the US economy. Um, and as, as the US dollar is a global reserve currency, it affects many other things like gold. Gold is priced in US dollar, silver, oil, uh, everything's priced in US dollar. And um, yeah, and the dollar circulates around the world. So the dollar is important and NFP certainly affects the dollar because uh, NFP is an important um uh, instrument or, or um, measure that the Federal Reserve watches. If the data is high, like we said, 400, 50, 100,000 added, then that will be super, super hot economy. Uh, then the Federal Reserve will be looking at, you know, 
well, maybe we'll just hike a few more times. Let's throw in another 25 BP in uh, hike in, in December, and that will uh, boost the dollar value, and that will smash other currency values. But to answer your question, I mean, this is a super good question, but it's quite broad, right? Uh, the impact of NFE data is, uh, is, is that uh, when, when the dollar value goes up, um, the yield, the, the interest rate goes up, the dollar value goes up, treasury yield goes up as well. And the US treasury is massive. So if you are living in Australia, say we have like a four point something percent treasury yield. So you buy Australian government bond, you get four point something percent. But if you buy US uh, government bond, uh, two year maturity, that is 5%. Okay, I think I've just checked right here. I'll show you here um, on my computer screen. So there we go. Uh, the two-year treasury yield note here, um, it's 4.995, so 5%. So if you buy that, 100 bucks, you get five bucks back per year. Okay, with Australian dollar, you get four, Australian government bond, you get four dollars something back. So that's a very attractive investment. Plus, there's so much U.S. treasuries circulating around the world. You know, if you if you are a government uh, sovereign fund, you have so much money. You, if you are a super superannuation fund. You have so much money on you, you will definitely chuck in the U.S. Uh, treasuries, and you will have, you know, uh, a good volatility. Uh, sorry, good uh, liquidity. You have good return, and you have uh, very, very low risk. So if that, you know, NFP is, is high, it would cause this trend, chain reaction. It goes all around the world, and money will flow, uh, flow into uh, the United States, and the uh, yields will go lower a little bit because people are buying them and the dollar will jump a lot and everything else will be uh you no know, under downside pressure okay so hopefully that understands it but we're more than happy to talk more about it next time okay it's, it's a really good topic and I'm, I'm into it okay jenny's got two more questions all right um what is the impact of nfp on the oh yes i got that one um thank you uh seven uh, gold is being strongly supported by cash flow. Is it possible to retest the old peak of two thousand and sixty-five dollars per ounce from Faceless? Well, that's a good name. A bit scary though. A bit scary. Faceless. Um, uh, let's see. So the two th the uh, uh, the old peak of two thousand sixty-five. I think that was. Oops, wrong chart. Uh, right here, two thousand sixty-five. I think this year it did two thousand eighty. This year. If I'm not mistaken, let's have a look. If it's here, 2080. That's there we go, 2080. So faceless. If you're talking about this 2080 level, uh, I don't think it's going to be there anytime soon. A few reasons. Um, 2080 dollars per ounce uh, has a few uh, conditions. The first condition was that we had the strongest inflation in around 40 years. Okay, so inflation that's number one. Uh, number two, central banks, global central banks are buying, were, they were buying a lot of gold. So not just one or two central banks, a lot of central banks were buying a lot of gold. Where did I know this? You can have a look at uh, World Gold Council. They've got reports on this. So that report was uh, was released uh, in March this year. Okay. That's right after the release and you see this massive pricing strike uh, uh, spike here. So question one, getting back to question one, why... Um, did the, the inflation affect um, the gold prices? Of course, well, inflation makes everything worthless. Yeah, you, you got uh, $2,000 in your pocket. Uh, inflation pushes prices up. Your $2,000 become uh, less. Okay, the value drops. So if you put your $2,000 in gold, then gold doesn't change any value. Gold is still gold, right? So after inflation, you sell your, your gold, you have your money back. So gold is is a hedge against inflation. That's number one. So that pushed up the prices here for gold. Uh, number two, why did the central banks buy gold in such huge quantities? Well, that's because if you want to issue currency, think yourself as the chairman or the um, the director of a central bank. If you print money out, let's go pow, 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 $10 billion tonight. Galen's got a printer, it's gonna work in blah, 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 money coming out. Okay, but who's gonna who's gonna use that money? Well, it's, it's made by someone or someone in Melbourne, someone wearing a suit and's got a nice pen. Uh, you know, why should we trust him? Same with central banks. I know. Well, maybe they're the part of you know. In most countries, they're part of the government, but in some countries, they're not. They don't have the authority. 
the piece of money, let's say this coin here, see this coin here, does it have value? Wow, the metal has some value, but most of the value is given to it by people who use it because they trust the government. Why do they trust the government? Because a long time ago, the governments, what well, the central banks have gold reserves, okay? So every currency you have, you go to the central bank, theoretically, you give them this, they give you a little bit of gold. Okay, if you give them ten thousand dollars, they give me some some gold, nice gold. If I give them this two dollar Australian coins, they probably just get you know a sh sharp knife and shoop, there you go, Glenn, that's yours. Okay, so provided they must have the gold in reserve for their currencies to worth the money, because bottom line is you can go back there to to swap your currency for the gold, they carry gold home. That's that's the trust. You know, it's it's that's the how the system works. Um, that that's it. That's it. So when with inflation being so high and there's so many central banks printing out money, so much money is coming out, these things are becoming becoming uh, less and less valuable. So people are going to go uh, if they become so less valuable. Um, what about the gold? Do you have enough gold to print out so much money? No. So central banks to prevent this uh, disaster from happening. They increase their holdings in gold. So they buy a lot more gold in case things go bad. Okay, so this is the why we have the uh, world world gold council um, world gold council reports on central banks increasing their holdings on 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 gold, and that's with these two reasons together, they push the gold up to two thousand eighty dollars per ounce. So these are two massive um, powers pushing these, uh, both of which are. Uh, you know, multi-decade opportunities. Coming back to um, current price levels, I think gold has been doing really, really well. Looking on the daily channel, uh, da daily uh, chart, you, you see these massive, massive bull candles, this one especially, 1868 to 1930. That is massive. But is it going to go any higher? Well, I think over 2000, there's a good chance it will go back above $2,000 per ounce. To go even higher, is that possible? Yes, but things will have to be uh, a lot worse. You know, geopolitical tensions. If that's, I mean, if that gets worse, if 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 I don't, I wouldn't say too much, but if it gets gets worse, then the market panics. Um, yeah, things will go higher. I think that's definitely the potential to go higher. But like I said before, uh, the way to trade it tonight, I'd be quite cautious. I, I won't be heavy handed. I won't just chuck in all of my uh, positions here at 19, uh, 1989 and wait for, to, wait for it to go to uh, 2018 all of it altogether. And probably not. I'll probably separate them into small, nice small lots and, and uh, go from there. Okay. Hopefully this answers your question, uh, Mr. Faceless. Uh, right. Let's see. Right, more questions. Okay, good. Rob, Rob says, uh, Glenn, do you think the Fed will raise interest rates one more time? Very, very good question. I think these are. Oh, I love you, the people. You're just so good at this question. So critical, so critical, and just right on, right on the, on the right spot. So good. Uh, Fed will raise rates again one more time, possibly, possibly. But if you say, um, you know, what are the chances of it rising, raising again? I say. 10% or so, maybe 10%. Uh, rates higher for longer, that, that is the base case scenario. So keeping that current 5.5% uh, range for a longer time, to maybe till the, uh, you know, the third quarter of, of next year, very likely. But is it going to go higher? Possibly. But you will have to have oil prices going up a lot, right? Because oil prices goes into uh going to inflation right petrol prices are going up everything else go up uh, that will have to go into um inflation to drive inflation back up again and that will uh, give the federal reserve the threat so the fed will be more likely to uh to to raise rates again at that point but currently not so much and if you look at um, cme i'm not sure if you guys look at that i'm just find that for you um cme let me just quickly find that CME Fat Watch. Okay, here we go. Okay, Fat Watch. Uh, I recommend using this as well. So CME Fat Watch. If you Google that, you'll find it. So CME Fat Watch. All right. Uh, let's have a look at here. So the, for the next Fed meeting, so December the thirteenth. Right. What's the current range? Right. Current target range is this. 
Yeah. So for the next meeting, if we have the chances for another hike, it's about 20%. That's what they think, 20%. But people who think it's going to be a current range is 80%. Okay. But before today, I think it was um, Wednesday this week, this bar was actually here and here was actually the rates going down. So people are starting to pricing, uh, uh, you know, uh, rates reductions from now on. Uh, and so the optimism is that, you know, and if you read um, uh, Mr. Powell's um, uh, FOMC statement from Thursday morning, you will see his, his words and rhetoric have changed a lot, a lot more dovish and uh, gentle as well. So um, we'll do, do, do I think they'll raise again? I think very uh, unlikely. Uh, very unlikely. Uh, I think they'll keep at current range um, for a longer time. That that's the the um, the case. Uh, but speaking of this, and we've done quite a bit of questions. Let's go to Australian dollar uh, against the U.S. dollar. Now have a look at this. The Australian dollar has been under pressure for a very long time, and it's horrible. Okay, it's horrible. Uh, I was in New York earlier this year. I spent a lot of money because because Australian dollar was terrible, and I bought at seventy cents. Okay, I, I was proud of the seventy cents. So good. Um, and now it's it's down to sixty two, sixty three. That's horrible. Uh, that the reason behind that is because the Federal Reserve has been relatively hawkish, and the uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia has been rather uh, dovish. Okay, so we have this Aussie dollar being smashed. However, we are having Australians, uh, Australia's um, interest rate decision next week. And currently, a lot of people are saying, you know, about 70% people are saying that we are going to hike next week. And this is also uh, why we are seeing that the price pushing higher here. Because uh, we have, I think in Australia, we have skipped um, three or four meetings already. So out of the three or four past meetings, we've kept our rates steady on hold. We didn't increase at all. The Federal Reserve, on the other hand, has been has done a few more times. And in Australia, our inflation has picked up again uh, in the third quarter, going back to 5.6%, I think. It's just jumping up again. Um, so uh, on the monthly and the quarterly basis, they've been they, they've gone up. On the yearly basis, they've been uh, down a little bit, but you can see that it's going down and it's bouncing up again. Now, with the having said that, with the the oil prices increasing again, we are very likely to see that um, translating into higher Australian inflation. So another hike from the RBA is possible next week and i'm tilting against that as well so if you're trading australian dollars against the usd or against other currencies uh you can put that on your radar you know if that pair goes down a little bit towards the uh support levels then maybe there'll be a chance for you to go in and and catch the the tailwind for the rba decision next week all right um yeah so the time is up, unfortunately. Do we have any more questions? I can do one or two more. Um, if not, you're more than welcome to type your questions to your client managers. Uh, I'm more than happy for them to pass them on to me and answer them, and they will pass this question, the answers back to you. And if you have any questions, other questions, or you have any suggestions to the way we do this, uh, please, please feel free to let us know. We're very, very happy to uh, to, to give you what you want and uh yeah very happy to have everyone here tonight a lot of people uh su super super happy to see you all and if not uh, if you're in melbourne uh enjoy your long weekend we have the melbourne cup horse racing next week um thank you Glenn. yeah thank you sue and then you guys have a wonderful weekend a happy trading tonight all the best with the, the nfp data all right thank you so much and i'll see you uh on the 15th uh, on the 15th again and any questions please let me know Beautiful. Have a good evening, guys. Bye bye. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Jenny. Bye bye. Yeah, see, see you. you. See you guys. See you, Ben. See you. Come on, mọi người. Come on, mọi người. Rất nhiều.